And that started what for me was a very interesting evening. Because uh, we were sitting in this living room with, of the order of 14 to 20, I forget. The number expands as I think about it. But a significant number of his neighbors talking about uh, nuclear reactors, Three Mile Island, uh, the danger that it posed, the probability that he would get killed on the way to Canada, <laughs> all the other things that were out there, and all of these conversations. The net result was that they all decided to stay put. And then that evening, as I'm laying in the camper, listening to CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox looking around then, I started to worry, was I right? <laughs> Because if you listen to the news anchors on those, those TV stations, it was really scary. And I really start, started to doubt what I knew about nuclear reactors and the way they were. Well, the bottom line to all of this was that with all of the scientists that the Nuclear Regulatory Agency and everybody else both rolled out to talk about this incident, this problem in Three Mile Island, the public simply did not believe the story. And it was that incident that started me down the road of trying to figure out how could I start having conversations about my science and what was my obligation to the American public to have a conversation in ways that were intelligible and where we were on the same frequency. I have to, I have to apologize. For some reason, my allergies decided to kick up this morning. Now, roughly a year and a half ago, this article appeared in Newsweek magazine. And I put this Newsweek across it to send you a signal that I don't, I don't intend for you to read this. Okay. Uh, but only the piece that I have circled are on worth in this. Why are we losing the PR war? What this author said, Sarah Bailey, that we come off as being arrogant. We come off as talking down to our audience. We come off as not being able to speak in the language that normal people, and she identifies John Q. Public as normal people, as understanding. And the net result is that this country is different than other countries. She mentions the UK, where she argues that in the UK, authoritarian rules. People respect experts. In this country, we tend to disbelieve the thing that experts tend to say, her words. So now the question is, what kind of thing ought we to do? And I look around at the various gaps that need to be filled. And these are the ones that I thought of. You can put your favorite ones in there. And I promise you, I made the slide before the current debacle in Washington. <laughs> But it's extremely apropos. And how do we balance what we call our needs versus the national policy? And what's the role that people like us must play as we 
uh, uh, help the nation engage in that conversation and have that conversation. Now, <coughs> Pew did a study, 2010, and what kind of things do we know? We know that newspaper and television journalism staff continue to shrink. That if you go to most newspapers in this country and look for the person who writes the science, that person is no longer there. This reminds me roughly of 20 years ago when I was trying to put together a program for an AAPT meeting. And I was looking for a person who uh, had been trained in the School of Education, but had a background in physics. And I'm hunting for this person, it was roughly 20 years ago. And I thought I called my friend Shirley Malcolm, I said, Shirley, I have not been able to find that person. Can you help me find a person with that background? And she said, Jim, it's a no set. <laughs> now, what I find is getting to the point where it's not quite that bad anymore. But it used to be that if you were looking for a person on a newspaper staff with a background in science, it was almost a no set. <coughs> we're going there again. News magazines moving toward opinion journalism. And, and you only have to watch any news station. I used to be an advocate of CNN because I thought they gave facts and it was not an opinion uh, piece. They are now just as opinionated as anybody else is, from my point of view. 2010, roughly 450 jobs were lost at stations, mostly of the kinds of people who interpret the science. I'll get back to that later. But radio played a usual role because the number of radio stations rose last year for some reason. Haven't figured out yet why. So, what about the public perception? I'm not going to read these. But what I want you to do is take a look at the percentage of the public. I forgot my later point. But the percentage of the public, what their response was, and on the right of scientists. And what you see when you take a look at that is that there is a disconnect. A disconnect with the amount, the, 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 the percentage of the public that believe that global warming is due to human activity versus the number of scientists who, who feel the same way. But the important thing is, thank you very much, but the important thing is, is that in my view, those aren't bad numbers, given all the other things that we have. But even that, you look at this, and some would say, these numbers are very, very low. <laughs> but the reality is, is that that's what, we got, that's what we have to work with, and <clears throat> that's the disconnect that we have to work on. And I argue that as scientists and educators, that's part of our responsibility. There is a strong belief, a strong support for government funding of scientific research. And that's what we have to work with. And that's in our favor. So how do we use this as our advantage? 